Cinema Secrets. When it comes to brute force and pure chaos, nothing tops a cinematic storm for whipping audiences into a frenzy. For a town with near perfect weather, Hollywood loves to portray Mother Nature at her very worst. From the earliest days of film, storms and floods of biblical proportion have struck a primal nerve among moviegoers. In director Rennie Harlan's action adventure, Deep Blue Sea, the employees of an ocean-based research facility are trapped in a life and death struggle against an insanely vicious hurricane. Creating such high impact mayhem was one of the biggest challenges for visual effects supervisor Jeffrey Oaken. First thing Rennie said to me is, this has to be the storm sequence unlike anything we've ever seen before. Originally, Harlan's entire storm of the century was going to be created using such traditional techniques as wave generators and rain bars. But Harlan wanted much more than they could possibly achieve with practical effects. So Oaken decided to create most of the squall inside the computer. But there was one problem. While computer graphics, or CG, had created some of cinema's most amazing imagery, no one had yet been successful at producing a realistic digital hurricane. Nobody's used rough water. Nobody's needed rough water. Nobody has thought rough water would work in CG. To go where no one had gone before, Oaken turned to his friends at the digital effects house, Flash Filmworks. You go to them and you tell them, this is the minimum of what I need. This is what it's got to do. This is what it's going to look like. God, please save me. I've got myself in another horrible mess. Flash Filmworks co-visual effects supervisor, John Mesa, was well aware of what they were up against. They wanted 50-foot waves hitting the buildings, uh, you know, storms, uh, swells, uh, all of it raining. It rained several layers of big rain, uh, storm clouds, all the different elements that you're not going to get unless you're very lucky. First, the team constructed an exact digital model of the ocean research facility, Aquatica. And then it was time to get wet. Different oceans, ones that, you know, just for calmer things, one that has an actual raindrop pattern on it. Stuff I never even know about. Technical supervisor Dan Novi was asked to stir up the stormy seas. Novi employed software that had successfully created calm water for such films as Waterworld. The process begins with a grid-like representation called a wireframe. He worked with the software developers to control such variables as wind speed and wave height enabling him to convert the calm water into a sailor's nightmare. The program itself is based on physics. Um, all I have to do is basically point the wind and tell it how hard to blow. While the software was able to whip up the giant swells that Rennie Harlan was looking for, they didn't crash and splash with the force of real waves. For that, the Flash Filmworks team turned to Mother Nature herself. We'd listen to the surf report every morning and instead of grabbing our surfboards, we'd grab our cameras. The team shot real waves crashing on the rocky California coast. In the computer, they were able to isolate the powerful white water turbulence and layer it onto their computer-generated waves at points of impact. Put it all together and you hit the button and, uh, and the magic happens. Huge CG surf wasn't the only challenge. The team was also responsible for a torrential superstorm. Rather than drowning the set in a digital rain, the Flash Filmworks team resorted to some tried and true techniques. They set up a weather studio in a rather modest location. We spent probably a week in my brother's backyard uh, shooting these different elements, including some rain. The effects crew used sprinklers spraying down in front of a black background to produce different types of rain for the shots. They constructed walls and floors to match portions of the set from which sheets of rain were supposed to run off and doused them in buckets of real water. These homemade effects played a big part in one of the most breathtaking scenes of the storm sequence when a rescue helicopter crashes into the research lab. The collision was filmed on a stormless set in Rosarita, Mexico, using a helicopter suspended from a crane. Animation supervisor Ken Stranahan 
had the daunting challenge of placing the doomed chopper in a drenching downpour. Now, to make something realistic, you really got to have that sense of depth. And that, that makes a dramatic shot. So one of the first things we did is we added rain on the surface of the uh, platform down here. And these are simple rain speckles, you know. And that was a shot element. Next, he positioned sprays to chop up the smooth water surface and added multiple layers of the backyard rain that the crew had shot. From completely dry to soaking wet. This amazing attention to detail might not consciously register with many moviegoers, but the effects team knows quality is in the details. And you're there to enhance the movie, no matter what. Uh, you're not there to try to make your 3D object look good. You're trying to make the shot look good, the sequence look good, make the movie look good. With the bone-chilling, magnificently brutal storm of deep blue sea, Oaken and Flash Filmworks have written a new chapter in Hollywood's long history of using weather as the catalyst for exciting stories. Thanks to them, in filmmaking, the phrase, rough water ahead, isn't so scary anymore.